Hey everybody, it's Tim. You know, the term parental alienation isn't exactly self-explanatory. If you haven't experienced it yourself or if you haven't done any reading about it, it's not immediately clear what it means or how it works. So I thought, can I use the movies to explain what parental alienation is? What, what movie gives the best analogy to explain it? Now, if you've seen this movie I'm gonna talk about, so much the better. But even if you haven't, there are no spoilers to this movie in the video ahead. So thanks in advance for your time, and uh, let's watch the video. In the 2010 movie Inception, written and directed by Christopher Nolan, we meet Mr. Cobb and his associate, Arthur. They are corporate spies, and they use an almost magical kind of technology to perform something called extraction. That is, they choose a target, drug that person into a deep sleep, and then enter the dream world of their subconscious. Targeted people do not realize that they're asleep and dreaming, which allows Mr. Cobb to search the physical manifestations of their mind to extract information. It's like cracking the safe of your brain. Cobb and Arthur meet Sato, a wealthy executive who wants them to perform the opposite of extraction, which is inception. Same technology, except instead of taking an idea out of someone else's mind, you're putting an idea in. Sato's motives are purely selfish. He wants Cobb and Arthur to incept into the mind of a young businessman named Robert Fisher the idea to dismantle the business empire of his father, who, of course, is Sato's main competitor. Small problem, though, with Inception, it's theoretical. As Arthur explains to Sato, I can put an idea into your mind just by talking to you. I can get you to think of something, but you know that the idea came from outside your own self. In order for Inception to work, the target needs to believe that they came up with that idea themselves. That means the idea needs to be planted deep in their minds. You must navigate far into their subconscious, where our most powerful fears, emotions, and psychological needs reside. Parental alienation operates on a similar principle. It puts an idea into a child's mind, and it does so by manipulating a child's fears, emotions, and needs. The child may even emerge convinced that the idea is their own. So what is the idea that alienators try to incept into a child's mind? For that, let's turn to Amy Baker, writing in an issue of Psychology Today. Parents who try to alienate their child from his or her other parent convey a three-part message to the child. One. I am the only parent who loves you, and you need me to feel good about yourself. Two, the other parent is dangerous and unavailable. And three, pursuing a relationship with that parent jeopardizes your relationship with me. In the movie Inception, Cobb says that our subconscious mind operates on emotion, not reason. And, he says, positive emotion trumps negative emotion every time. Cobb and Arthur want their target, Robert Fisher, to break up his father's company. But they don't want Robert to do that to get back at his father, with whom he's had some difficulty. As Cobb points out, all of us naturally want reconciliation. So the positive spin is, I'm breaking up my father's company as a way of becoming my own person, which both my father and I want. In a similar fashion, parental alienation tries to convince the child that it's a good thing to reject their other parent. How can that be a good thing? If the child can be convinced that their other parent is a bad person, someone who doesn't love them, someone who's a danger to them, then rejecting that parent can feel like self-preservation, self-empowerment, or the liberation of starting life anew. 
Parental alienation is not an offhand comment or an occasional action. It's a pattern of behaviors, of consistent and repeated attempts to put that idea into a child's mind. Now, I'd rather not turn this into a how-to video on parental alienation, but I will mention some of the ways in which an alienating parent accomplishes their ends. Typically, they'll start by acting more like the child's buddy than the child's parent. They'll try to cultivate a mindset of us versus them, the them being the other parent and their extended family. Alienating parents will inappropriately share details with the child about the divorce and the marriage. They mix half-truths with believable lies to make the other parent look or sound bad. And of course, there are the old standbys of bribery, bullying, and threats. Alienating parents know that children will tend to align themselves with the parent whom they perceive to have the most power and control. Children may even make false statements about the other parent to please and appease the alienator. So where does this leave us? Parental alienation is like inception, so what? Well, let's complete the paragraph from Amy Baker that I quoted earlier in which she talks about what message parental alienation conveys to a child. In essence, the child receives the message that she or he is worthless and unloved and only of value for meeting the needs of others. This is the core experience of psychological maltreatment that is emotional abuse as defined by the American Professional Society on the abuse of children. So, parental alienation is real, and it is a form of child abuse. Children who are victims of parental alienation do not fully comprehend what is happening to them. They do not understand they are being manipulated emotionally and psychologically. Social workers, therapists, attorneys, judges, and parents should learn and know more about parental alienation so they can do something about it. And there are things we can do about it. If you'd like to learn more about shared parenting and its benefits, click the link in the description of this video to visit the website of the National Parents Organization. Thank you.